This next video will make you question everything. Remember, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's check it out. Super Bowl Super Bets. Personally, I'm completely against gambling. Unless you're super lucky, it's probably not gonna pay off, right? Well, it will if your name's Lisa Simpson. Back in 1992, The Simpsons Season 3 episode Lisa the Greek revealed that the family's middle child has an uncanny ability to predict the outcome of football games. Homer quickly catches on to this and makes a killing by placing wagers on the matches. At the end of the episode, Lisa correctly predicts the winners of the Super Bowl will be the Washington Redskins. Over in our world, the real Super Bowl aired just days after this episode, and you guessed it, Washington Redskins. won. <laughs> Spooky, yes, but it gets even spookier. The following year, Fox decided to broadcast the episode before the Super Bowl again with one change. The Simpsons team decided to dub over new predictions to make the episode more current. This time, Lisa predicted that the Dallas Cowboys would emerge victorious. Amazingly, she was right again, and it didn't stop there. The tradition continued for the following two years with Lisa correctly predicting another victory by the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I know people are going to be like, yo, this was coincidence, but what are we in now? Year 2023, and they're still predicting things? To <laughs> we can stop saying it's a coincidence a long time ago. Followed by one for the San Francisco 49ers. Wow, one Super Bowl prediction is mad enough, but four in a row? That's absolutely That's crazy. insane. That's crazy. I sure hope if there was any betting going on at Simpsons HQ, the staff listened to Lisa. A FIFA fiasco. Who doesn't love soccer? The professional side of this classic game is internationally governed by FIFA, who enforce rules, organize tournaments, and ensure fair play. In 2014, an episode of The Simpsons aired where FIFA contacts Homer and asks him to step in as a referee because everybody else capable of doing the job is corrupt. Homer accepts, and sure enough, whilst refereeing for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, he's offered countless bribes to influence the outcome of matches. <laughs> Just a year later, massive corruption going all the way to the top of FIFA was uncovered in the real world, oh. mostly centered on, guess what? Bribes being accepted by officials in exchange for no. lucrative contracts or other benefits. Whoa. What makes for the perfect prediction cherry on top of this delicious prophecy cake is the result of the cup. Homer calls the final game fairly and Germany win by beating Brazil. That same year, Germany would defeat Brazil and become the winners of the cup, albeit in two different games. Okay, now I'm getting freaked out. Maybe Homer was out on the pitch that day. Miss See, a lot of people be having their skepticism or, or be skeptical. Let's just say they'd be skeptical about sports betting and different things like that, whether these games are, you know, con manipulated or however you want to say it, whether there's a game script. I think that was the, the most recent thing with the scripts the, the past couple of years. They're talking about these games are scripted. But, you know what I mean, when people point to the referees or – Vegas or saying Vegas has a hand in it and all that kind of stuff like that, man. To see that come out, people were right. This universe mistake. Vaguely uncomfortable beauty pageants have become such a mainstay of our culture that they'll probably still be around in a thousand years. Futurama seems to agree with me. In the episode The Lesser of Two Evils from the show's second season, a literal Miss Universe pageant takes place with contestants from alien planets. The only thing is, the host gets the winner wrong. He accidentally calls Leela's name before immediately having the tiara and bouquet taken back from her and handed to the real winner, much to Leela's disappointment. Then, 15 years after the episode aired, the real-life 2015 Miss Universe pageant ended with its host, Steve Harvey, Steve announcing Har Ariadna Gutierrez, Miss Columbia, as the winner. But unfortunately for Gutierrez, he got it wrong. The actual winner was Miss Philippines, Pia Wurzbach. Yikes. Right there on stage, the crown and sash were removed from Gutierrez and handed over to Wurzbach. Naturally, Gutierrez was distraught. Man, what a mess. The striking similarities to the Futurama episode can be ignored. However, Wurzbach isn't an extraterrestrial purple blob, so the show writers lose points there. You know what else shouldn't be ignored? The I think we all have that fear of being embarrassed on national TV. 
but she actually experienced what we all fear, bro. I, I don't think she'll ever recover. Even if she says, oh, I'm fine. I'm, I've, I've gotten over it. I don't think you ever get over something like that. Subscribe no. buttons down below. Give them a tap and that way you'll always be up to date on my amazing content. All finished? Great. Let's look at the next crazy prediction. Edible equines. You'd rightfully be a little peeved if you finished a meal thinking it was one thing and then discovered afterwards that it was something else entirely. I wish I had been told what Shiraco was before I chowed down. <clears throat> Anyway, in 2013, the people of Europe were sent into a frenzy when it came to light that, wait for it, they'd been eating horse meat. Ugh. It turned oh. out that meat suppliers across the continent had been using the cheap meat without declaring it and passing it off as beef. So it ended up for sale in grocery stores and, well, I'm sure you can imagine what happened next. Yuck. However, whilst- How many times do you think that's happened and they haven't said anything? That's the thing we have to worry about. We probably all have had some kind of meat we thought might have been beef that was something else. Most people were shocked and outraged by the scandal. The writers of The oh. Simpsons had seen it coming since 1994. In an episode from that year, a quick visual gag shows Lunch Lady Doris reaching into a barrel of assorted horse parts to serve to the kids. Say what? Yep, yeah, oh. pretty weird, right? Sure, it's probably just a crazy coincidence, but it's so specific. Oh. I'm just glad I don't live in Europe. But hey, for those who do, the main thing is that it's all behind us oh. now. And I wanted me like a burger tomorrow, but I I think I'm going to wait, man, and let this get out of my mind first because I won't be able to eat it. <laughs> I can imagine me picking the bun up, putting the bread. <laughs> yeah, no, no. no. Strange no. silhouette. The Simpsons is no stranger to episodes set in the future. 1995's Lisa's Wedding was the first of these flash forwards and would turn out to be a more accurate depiction of the future than anyone could have known. The episode saw Lisa falling in love with British student Hugh Parkfield. But as she flies over to England to meet his family, we see something very, very weird. While passing over the London skyline, our attention is drawn to the silly visual of a digital Big Ben. That's not the weird part, though. That is. This building looks eerily like the Shard, an artsy skyscraper that didn't begin construction until 2009 and wasn't even conceived of until 2000. Mm. It doesn't just look similar either. It's also positioned next to Tower Bridge, just like the real one. Could London's higher-ups have been huge Simpson buffs? Saw the episode and thought, yeah, that looks pretty cool, let's do it. Sounds crazy, I know, but it's a more sensible explanation than the writers having access to a freaking time machine. I'm honestly stumped by this one. If you think you can explain it, then let me know in the comments down below. Finger licking good. I love fried chicken. Scratch that. I could not survive without fried chicken. It seems Eric Cartman from South Park shares my passion for poultry. In the season 14 episode, Medicinal Fried Chicken, all the KFC locations in Colorado are closed down. Shock. Horror. Cartman can't handle this. So the plot of the 2010 episode has him sourcing the delicious food himself and selling it on the black market. Ha, huh, a black market for fried chicken? That's obviously a ridiculous concept, right? Right. You can probably guess where this is going. In the UK in 2018, over three quarters of the nation's KFC restaurants didn't receive their shipment of stock, creating a very real and devastating fried no chicken way. shortage. Man, it doesn't bear thinking about. Seeing opportunity in the tragedy though, certain savvy sellers went to work posting listings for the suddenly super rare chicken on bidding sites like eBay at staggeringly what? high prices. No, you aren't seeing things. This sad-looking meal was on offer for over 25,000 pounds. That's a little more than $30,000. Jeez, Cardinal <laughs> would be proud. The bids in- Could you imagine that? Can you imagine that? And then, you know, to be honest with you, I can see this happening in the future. Us loving things like chicken and different things and then us not being allowed to have it for some health reasons but people still want that taste or, or want that feeling and try to find it and they'll go to the black. Like, it'll probably be on a black market site. 
It's, this seems really possible for the future. It had were probably a joke, but similar listings popped up reselling menu items at around the $100 mark, which is still 10 times more expensive. Man, there's finger looking good, and then there's wallet destroyingly good. <laughs> Disney's Monopoly. From Marvel to Star Wars, Disney have bought out so many franchises and companies that they've drawn widespread criticism for trying to monopolize the film and television industries. Back in the year 2000, though, their crusade for media dominance had barely begun. Even so, The Simpsons saw it coming. In the season 10 episode, When You Dish Upon a Star, Homer winds up pitching a movie idea to director Ron Howard. Howard likes his story so much, he decides to steal it and goes to present it to film studio 20th Century Fox. Outside the studio is this sign, explicitly stating that they're owned by Disney, only they weren't. Fast forward to 2017 and the Walt Disney Company announced its intention to buy Fox for a colossal $71.3 billion, fulfilling The Simpsons' 17-year-old prophecy. Jeez. Wow. So what happened here? Was a psychic really working for the show? Well, Rich Apple, the writer of the episode, recalled the gag after hearing about the real-life acquisition. It turns out Disney had bought television network ABC a couple of years before the episode aired, so it stemmed from a general sense that Disney would own them all one day. You can rest assured I won't be getting bought out by Disney anytime soon, though I wouldn't mind becoming the latest princess. <laughs> that rumor mill be strong, bro. That's why when it comes to like the stock market, I'd be like, man, a lot of these jokes be trading off of insider information. Just like he acquired insider information, they do that everywhere. Are you being watched? We've all had that uncomfortable sensation we're being watched by someone. Well, in 2013, computer intelligence consultant Edward Snowden leaked classified NSA documents proving that the U.S. government had been spying on its civilians' conversations. It was an incredible scandal that made Snowden a criminal in the U.S. and forced him to flee the government's wrath. But what's all this got to do with cartoons and predictions? Well, two words, The Simpsons. Haha, <laughs> of course. Six years before the scandal, The Simpsons movie was released. In it, our favorite cartoon family find themselves on the run from the US government after uncovering a conspiracy. Hmm, already sounds a little familiar, right? Anyway, while taking the bus, Lisa points out they should keep quiet to avoid attention. Marge replies that it's totally absurd to think anyone's listening in. Turns out, though, the bus driver's a robot that's recording them and transferring the audio straight to the NSA, where it's revealed every conversation in the country is, in fact, being listened to. Um, what? That's freaky, to say the least. It's worth pointing out that the U.S. government doesn't literally listen to every conversation, and they probably don't have robot bus drivers. But they do have their grubby paws on a lot more private data than they'd like you to know. This is one prediction I really didn't want to come true. <laughs> Eavesdropping devices. Cupcakes, cupcakes, cupcakes. <clears throat> if you have ads for cupcakes popping up all over your Instagram app now, I'm not sorry. The point I'm trying to make is our microphone-enabled smart devices are always listening and oh, yeah. will even tailor advertisements towards conversations you've had. This sort of technology has become super prevalent in the last few years, yet Futurama predicted it way back in 2001. Really? In the season 3 episode, Luck of the Fryish, Fry believes his brother has stolen his name. While trying to research the subject on the internet, Professor Farnsworth says Fry out loud. His browser responds, finding a helpful movie about Philip J. Fry, but also opening his calendar to Friday and ordering french fries which not only predicted voice-activated devices, but also the annoying habit they have of misunderstanding what we're telling them. Nowadays, the tech is everywhere from smartphones to smart speakers. Unfortunately, it's not advanced enough yet to instantly order french fries. Man, now I'm hungry. <laughs> Big Dave's Little Michael. If there's one thing people seem to like more than enjoying art, it's censoring it, so that other people can't. Enter the 1990 Simpsons episode, Itchy and Scratchy and Marge. In it, Mrs. Itchy S decides that the kid's favorite cartoon, Itchy and Scratchy, is too violent. So she campaigns to censor the show, and ultimately ends up incensing the town so much that they censor everything. Even Michelangelo's classic art piece, David, with a pair of pants. 
Now, David has been at the center of censorship discussions for a long time. Many versions of the statue have a fig leaf covering David's, uh, little Michelangelo. What this episode really predicts is the discussion on clothing the artwork. In 2016, 26 years after it aired, a sculpture exhibition was set up over in St. Petersburg, Russia, and a 16-foot-tall replica of David was erected outside the building it was taking place in. This offended conservative Russians, and after several complaints, a vote was held to decide whether the statue should be clothed, and if so, with what. There's no word on the outcome, but one woman suggested dressing him in a big old pair of pants, just like in The Simpsons. And I really wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly what happened. Either way, there's no denying it's a super strange coincidence. Hmm. Greasy grifters. Look, I get it. Everybody needs to make cash, but I bet you didn't think there was any money to be made from selling grease, did you? Well, in a 1998 episode of The Simpsons, Homer did. He and Bart find out there's a lucrative grease trade and start stealing it in huge amounts to sell on. But stealing grease? Ha! Huh, that never happened in real life, surely? Turns out it would. Believe it or not, in the years since the episode aired, the grease business has become a seriously lucrative one. What? Demand for biodiesel has increased massively and guess what can be turned into biodiesel? Grease. So after restaurants are done with their old vegetable oils, they sell them on to recyclers for hundreds of dollars a barrel. No the thing way. is, criminals have caught on to this and now they're posing as grease collection companies, stealing the grease and selling it on are for you profit. Serious? Ring any bells? Jeez, I'm losing track of how many times those yellow fellows have got it right now. Too many. False. Yeah, I missed the whole grease bandit situation that took place. I missed all of that. Can you imagine getting done at uh, finishing your shift at the end of the, the night at a restaurant, cleaning either the grease trap or whatever, or, or dumping the grease? And you got to have a police escort to go outside and do that. <laughs> yeah, that's insane, man. I did not know that was going on. I'm going to have to let my son know about that. He works at like a sports bar and grill. He just started working in the kitchen. Like, Yo, be careful when you go outside and dump that grease, man. Somebody might be waiting on you. Profits. Dang. For every spot on prediction a cartoon makes, there are 10 others that are total duds. But folks on the internet are often convinced these fakes are real. Never fear, my alter ego Buzzkill Man is here to rain on their parade and separate the truth from the lies. Now, if you're one of the seven people that haven't seen Game of Thrones, you might want to skip ahead 30 seconds or so, because I'm going to spoil the heck out of it. All right, now that those losers are gone, lots of people are convinced that this scene from the Simpsons 2017 episode, The Surfsons, predicts the much maligned 2019 ending to the HBO epic. I admit, the two scenes do look very similar. But hold on. A dragon destroying a town is a trope as old as the fantasy genre itself. It's been written about and televised a countless number of times. Truth is, nobody could have predicted the ending of Game of Thrones would suck that much. What sucked even more, though, was Toys R Us closing down in 2018. I was blindsided. Where else can I go to buy my Barbie dolls for my, ahem, <clears throat> uh, sister? Uh, okay, Toys well, Russ. anyway. According to the citizens of the internet, I'd have known it was coming if I'd just listened to The Simpsons. This scene from a 2004 episode supposedly shows Mo shutting down the store. In actuality, the grouchy bartender is just switching the R on the sign to face the correct way around in an attempt to make the town less kid-friendly. The screenshot was taken out of context and framed as something else by internet liars. Huh. Welcome Over to in the world of Futurama, the episode Raging Bender is often given credit for predicting interactive film media like Netflix's movie Bandersnatch. In Raging Bender, Fry does go to see a movie where you choose the outcome, much like you can in Bandersnatch, though it predates the Black Mirror episode by a whopping 18 years. Surely this one's a real prediction then? Nope. Turns out Bandersnatch was never in the running for first interactive movie. The real first was named Kino Automat and came- I've been meaning to ask people, how do y'all feel about that? Interactive movies. Like you're watching a movie and then something, all of a sudden you get a pop-up and it says either this or this happens or take this route or that route. And it keeps happening over and over again throughout the movie. How do you feel like that? I think I'll get irritated. I'm getting irritated just thinking about it. Yeah, I don't think I'm a fan of the interactive movie things, but I like, like the old school way. Turn it on, hit play, watch it till the end, 
go to the next movie. Simple. I'm a simple person. I don't think I'm like that. I, I may sound like an old grouch at the time, but I don't think I'm gonna like the interactive whole movie thing. Came out all the way back in 1967. Back then, people didn't decide what happened with the TV remote. They saw it at the theater. At various points throughout the movie, the scene was paused, a moderator walked out on stage, and the audience would vote on what happened next. That's actually pretty cool. But it means Futurama was commenting on the past, not predicting the future. Regardless enough of that, let's get back to some real predictions. Borrowing some credibility. Politicians aren't exactly the most popular people, so it's not uncommon for them to enlist a little star power to win people over a concept 2007's The Simpson movie lambasts. In the story, the U.S. government is planning to destroy the town of Springfield and open a new Grand Canyon in the place of its remains. Naturally, this isn't expected to prove a popular proposal, so the government enlists Hollywood favorite Tom Hanks. It's a funny gag that pokes fun of celebrities propping up politicians, but it would wind up being yet another prophetic vision. Fifteen years later, in 2022, Hanks narrated and appeared in a promotional video designed to highlight the achievements of President Joe Biden's government. In a time of immense scrutiny for the Biden administration, the video was intended to turn things around and give the government some much-needed credibility by borrowing some of Tom's. The real government vid didn't visually match up quite as much with The Simpsons as some people would have you believe, but the undeniably uncanny similarities led to an explosion of social media posts. I wonder if Tom had the opportunity to take that back. Would he do so? <laughs> Even other politicians and political commentators pointed them out. That's got to have been embarrassing. Ah well, just relax and remember. This is Tom Hanks saying, if you're going to pick a government to trust, why not this one? <laughs> Old yeah. tiny divination. Take that back, Tom. If I say cartoon, you probably immediately think of an animated TV show. But cartoons can also mean physical comic strips, and they've existed far longer than television. Over a hundred years, in fact. So it's no surprise that over that time, some of them have made some super freaky predictions. Back in the Second World War, cartoons were used by both sides as propaganda tools to push their political agendas. The patriotic American hero Uncle Sam featured in the December 1941 issue of National Comics, where he defended Pearl Harbor from an attack by a mysterious enemy army. Just a few days after the strip was published, the Japanese Navy actually attacked Pearl Harbor. Oh, that's beyond freaky. Going a little further back in time, we have this panel from 1923. It shows how the artist envisioned their job would be in 2023, which was then a whole 100 years in the future. A machine is doing the work for them while they casually arrange a fishing trip. Amazingly, AI art generation has exploded in popularity over the last few years, so the cartoon got that pretty much spot on. Right. Less spot on is the artist's happy reaction, though. Rather than freeing up time for fishing, many artists are worried the new technology will put their jobs at risk. Only time will tell. Finally, and the oldest tune I've got for you... Or steal their identity, steal their voices, or, you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's getting ridiculous. I've seen some videos today with certain things. I, I'm scared for everyone at this point, man. Who is this, released way back in 1919. Yes, that's a cell phone. And no, cell phones like that weren't invented until decades later in the 1970s. Whoa. Yet the strip accurately depicts how annoying they can be in places like the movie theater. Come on, we've all been there. It's not that surprising to think yep. people speculated about portable phones back then. But the level of accuracy here is bizarre. Coincidence or time traveler? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> President Trump. If you ask me what the most well-known Simpsons prediction is, there isn't much down in my mind. Way back in the year 2000, the show's 11th season featured an episode where an adult Lisa becomes president of the United States. As the newly inaugurated President Simpson discusses the state of affairs with her team, she mentions that they've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. As we all know, in 2016, Donald Trump would indeed be elected president. Wow. Which is pretty darn freaky considering he didn't announce his candidacy until 15 wow. years after the episode aired. Simpsons just don't miss. I wonder if anybody has the statistics on how many they've actually predicted. 
I bet it's an astronomical number, bro, of the, the predictions they've done throughout the years. In recent years, though, this already impressive prediction has been somewhat overshadowed by other supposedly wow. even more accurate predictions. When Trump announced wow. his candidacy in 2015, he descended Trump Tower on an escalator while people stood waving signs for him. Lo and behold, the Simpsons had apparently predicted this exact scene years before. Dang. Only this time, they actually hadn't. It turns out the scene is only so similar because it's from a 2015 Simpsons YouTube video produced after Trump's campaign had already begun. Oh, okay. Damn. And it's exactly the same story with this image propagated as a so-called prediction of Trump's 2016 election run. The Simpsons screenshot is from the same 2015 YouTube short. Sneaky online trolls had simply claimed it was a prediction for internet clout. Many also say that this clip from the shorts predicts Trump's 2024 election run, even Simpsons writer Al Jean posted on Twitter asserting the claim. But that's not exactly true either. The visual gag just makes fun of Trump by implying he'll run every four years until he's elected. So 2024 would inevitably be one of those years. Come on, Al. Stop spreading fake news. Sad. Just sad. Future technology. Science and sci-fi have a symbiotic relationship. Fictional technology often inspire people to try and create it in the real world. Because of this, there are a surprising number of cases where old cartoons appear to directly predict the future. One 1992 Simpsons episode features a device that could translate baby cries into plain English. A fantastical idea at the time, yet very real today. At least that's what companies like Zoundream claim. The startup got to work on the project in 2020, nearly 30 years after The Simpsons came up with it. And although it won't allow you to actually converse with a baby, it does apparently translate their cries into a few fundamental needs. It even looks kind of similar to the animated one. But enough of The Simpsons first. I don't think I want to know what the baby is saying when they're crying. You know what I mean? Or actually really, really like interpret it accurately. I don't think I want to know that. Because I've heard these conspiracy theories about babies being, you know what I mean, <laughs> someone else and they're coming in the world and the reason why they're crying is because they realize they lost everything and now they're, they're having to start over and all their, their life that as they know it is gone. I don't want to know that. I don't want to look at my kid in a weird sort of way. I, I don't. Nah, hey, that, that cut me right there. It can stay far away from me. Second. Classic 60s animated sitcom The Jetsons is set in the future and predicted a whole slew of tech that would later end up a massive part of our day-to-day -day lives. Flat screen TVs? Check. Smartwatches? Check. My personal favorite, though, this little automatic vacuum. It's a Roomba! I <laughs> wonder if the Jetsons one constantly smacks into things, too. I don't I'd think they predicted it. I think a lot of people took the ideas from these shows like that. You know what I mean? They they watched these shows and they caught these little intricate details in the shows and, and was like, you know, we'll figure out a way to try to do this. I think that's where some of that comes from. I know, I know. You could argue those predictions aren't that impressive as they were all logical extensions of items that already existed. But you definitely can't use that argument with this next crazy piece of tech from a 1998 Futurama episode. Named a Smelloscope, the device in the show looks like a telescope, but is designed to magnify smells rather than images. 24 years later, the real world was graced with the Nasal Ranger. <laughs> what? <laughs> How fashionable. While not quite the same as its cartoon counterpart, it's certainly similar. I've never seen It uses seen a this. carbon filter to isolate odors from the rest of the air, so when you take a honk through it, it's easier to determine how strong a scent is. Hmm, I can think of a few occasions where this would be a more negative thing than a positive thing, to be honest. Toy Poodles. Have you ever been scammed? Obviously yeah. I haven't. I'm way too smart. But my uh, friend has made some pretty stupid purchases in the past. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, right. Scamming. Well, in a 2002 episode of The Simpsons, Mobster Fat Tony and his gang are working on the single most impressive scam in history. Gluing cotton balls to ferrets to pass them off as toy poodles. <laughs> okay. So maybe it's not that impressive? Nobody would try that in real life, right? Yes, they Fast would. to Argentina in 2013. A retired man thought he'd found the bargain of a lifetime when he managed to buy some toy poodles from a local bazaar for $150 each. 
Just one would normally set you back over a thousand dollars, so the guy thought he'd snapped up an absolute bargain. As you can probably imagine, he hadn't. Yep, a criminal gang had been passing ferrets off as poodles. Unfortunately, this ain't a joke. Unlike the episode of The Simpsons, instead of gluing cotton balls to the poor animals, the real gang had pumped them full of steroids at birth to beef them up. Man, that's oh. awful. On the plus side, however, as far as I can tell, the duped buyer never lodged any complaints about the fraudulent ferrets. So who knows, maybe he fell in love with his new muscly mammals despite their lack of bark. We can only hope. Nah, I want what I asked for. Oh. Don't do that. No. Debunk divinations. So we covered a few false predictions earlier, but there are so many glaring inaccuracies being shared online that I feel compelled to address more of them. That's right, it's the triumphant return of Buzzkill Man! A lot of people claim that a sequence in the 1993 Simpsons episode, Marge and Chains, predicted the 2020 COVID pandemic. In the episode, a flu that originates in Asia makes its way to Springfield, causing an outbreak that sends the town into panic. Sounds familiar, right? What's more, this image is commonly associated with the episode. Whoa. Which would be astounding if it wasn't completely fake. This oh. is the real screenshot. Someone photoshopped it. Plus, the flu in the episode comes from Japan, not China, as is commonly accepted with COVID. Dope! A similar false prediction stems from the 1990 Simpsons episode, The Telltale Head. In this season one classic, Bark beheads the statue of town founder Jebediah Springfield. Randos Online claimed the episode predicted the politically motivated beheading of Boston's Christopher Columbus statue in 2020. Ha! This is a reach so far, only Elastigirl could pull it off. Bart beheads the Jebediah statue to impress some bullies, not for political reasons. And people have been defacing statues since they first started being built. Yeah, this is about as far from a prediction as it gets. Or at least I thought it was until I heard about this next one. See, this image has been spread around the web by some YouTube channels. The picture depicts Bart glumly standing by a grave of late basketball legend Kobe Bryant. Apparently, it's from a Simpsons episode that aired no. sometime before the sportsman's tragic helicopter crash in 2020. A lie. The episode the image is from has nothing to do with Brian. The grave's been photoshopped. Wow. <sighs> Talk about bad. Hey, y'all are just cruel and cold, bro. That's, that's foul to even do or play like that, man. See, this, these are the times where I just can't stand the internet. Paste. There is a conspiracy doing the rounds that an earlier different episode predicted Brian's passing, but it's also completely baseless. The episode just mentions a helicopter crashing. I'm stumped why people even bother spreading these lies, but it right. just goes to show you can't believe everything you see online. Unless it's on one of my videos, of course. <laughs> Peculiar Piscine. It's pretty difficult to make an iconic cartoon character with zero lines of dialogue and only a few episodes of screen time. However, the writers of The Simpsons pulled it off with Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish. He first appeared on the show back in 1990, where the once ordinary fish is irradiated by toxic waste from Mr. Burns' nuclear power plant, giving him his iconic third eye. Blinky reached all new heights of fame, Blinky. though, in 2011 when some Argentinian fishermen discovered, well... Take a look. Yep, it's a real life Blinky. Ooh. This bizarre three eyed wolf fish was caught in a reservoir that's, get this, fed by a local nuclear power plant. Hmm. Oh. That's unnervingly similar. But don't worry, it's more likely that the all seeing fish is just the result of a natural mutation rather than radioactivity. These kinds of genetic anomalies are actually more common in nature than you might think. Even so, it's definitely creeptastic. Okay, I bro, I'm scared for us, man. I'm I'm super scared for us, bro. Just to think what's being dumped in our waters, and I, I know that has nothing to do with this video, but they shouldn't have showed me that, man. I'm really worried for us, man. What are they doing to our food and different things like that? I'll be careful out here, man. But um, yeah, the Simpsons, they're the goats. They're the goats with these predictions, man. <laughs> You know, but besides the ones that are fake and obvious, they still have predicted a lot of things. That's crazy to me. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section and let me know what you thought of this crazy video of shockingly accurate cartoon predictions. All right. It's your boy L. Till the next one I'm gone, man.